Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oops. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Th
kind of an evening help session. So anyone who is working on those applications who has questions, um, maybe places we need to clarify, they'll have an opportunity um, to meet. And it'll be myself and probably a couple people from the Conservation Commission that will be available to help. We'll have a second workshop um, in May. Um, that's scheduled for May 18th. Um, that workshop will go over <coughs> Rain garden design um, installation. We'll be able to go out and look at the rain garden that was installed in front of the library last year. Um, it happens to be the library is very convenient <laughs> for holding these workshops. We have a great example right outside, so it'll be nice to be able to look at that. Um, we will award. I should take a step back. We'll award the grant on um, May 8th, and then we'll have to work with the homeowner to figure out and business owner to figure out when the installation will happen. But that'll be at some point over the summer. It is our hope that um, DES will be able to help us with the design part. They have several staff members that have been um, working with other communities to um, design and install them. So they're a great resource for figuring out, you know what types of plants to use and different things like that. Um, another source of funding will be, if you guys recall, we've been doing for three years now a, rain, a painted rain barrel auction. Um, we've been putting that money towards um, what we've been calling green um, infrastructure. Um, rain gardens classify as one of those, so we're hoping to use the funds for that to support uh, the installations. We're looking to make this uh, an ongoing program, not just a one-year program for Hampton. Um, so we want to continue to work with more homeowners, more business owners, um, to spread the wealth, if you will, as far as green infrastructure installations are concerned, and also expand the community's knowledge of green infrastructure so people can do some of this work on their own. Mm -hmm. We saw a report um, just today that came out from PrEP, the Pisqua Piscataqua Region Estuaries Partnership. And they did an analysis of a, variety, a number of different watersheds around the state, around the seacoast, uh, the Hampton Seabrook Estuary being one of them. And one of the things that it was shown in the report is that we have one of the highest percentages of fertilizer uh, pollution in our waterways of, of most of the watersheds along the seacoast. So working with this program can help to solve that problem as well as other problems that we have. So we hope you'll give us your blessing to go forward with this. Thank you. Any public comment from the audience? Any public comment? See none, Mr. Waddell. Yeah, um, and the, the 8,500 comes from DES? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, it sounds like a good program. It sounds like a good educational uh, vehicle for helping out with pollution. I'm all for it. Selectman Wilson. How about a soak up the snow garden? <laughs> 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 um, it's a great program. Um, it might, I don't know whether it would be possible for you to consider uh, installing a rain garden at some point in time in one of the elementary schools in, in Hampton. I don't know if a program allows for that type of thing, but it might be good to get the youngsters involved. Um, and uh, I uh, am delighted to see you doing this, and any money you can get out of Concord, DES, or whoever, grab it. Mm -hmm. And I will be happy to move that we accept, uh, authorize acceptance of the uh, money. Thank you. Motion or second? We'll second. continue on a second by Griffin. Sir? Good luck. <laughs> it's a great idea. As Mary was said, Louise, at any time you get some money from somebody else, <laughs> it's a great thing for this town anyways. And, uh, but I think it's also good, as uh, was said, that, you know, it's good for our school children. It's good for everybody. It's good for the whole community. So mm -hmm. I think it's a well-balanced well program. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All those in favor? Unanimous. And seeing no more further comment, this meeting is closed at 1908. Thank you very much. Just a tough sell for <laughs> I know, you're always a tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Roman to public comment period, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. Corrine Baker, 244 Exeter Road. Um, last week's um, Board of Selectmen meeting, which I did not attend but watched on TV, um, you all, I believe you all spoke about in favor of the budget, talking about kicking the can down the road, that old cliche, mm -hmm. and having to uh, work on our infrastructure. But when I looked over the budget, I see very little really that it, that is spent on infrastructure in the budget. <coughs> in fact, if we approve this year's budget, 
we have six thousand dollars for sidewalks and if we if we don't approve it we have uh, last year's budget amount which was twenty six thousand plus whatever um, I don't know if you go by a percentage it goes up by a certain percent so we actually lose money for some in infrastructure um, as far as the highway streets and buildings that's what I consider infrastructure and the total is um, I think like 1.96 and out of that 1.35 is administration so we're not really spending that much money on you know fixing the roads we're um, we're kind of continued to kick the kick the can down the road, and I am all in favor of spending the money on the roads because I live on Exeter Road, and I don't know how they're going to patch that. I just don't. Three hundred nineteen thousand is um, one of the war Warren articles. That's not even going to touch it. Those uh, when Keith was talking about when Mr. Norris was talking about um, putting a one and a half inch top layer on that. That doesn't even fix my driveway for what's happened this winter. So um, I'm all in favor of, of infrastructure, putting money into infrastructure, but this budget doesn't seem to do that. So I guess we'll have to attack some more, put in some more warrant articles next year that really do, or, um, or work on this a little earlier. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. For the public comment. I just wanted to share, uh, Ray and Dion, the Hampton Conservation Coordinator, I just wanted to share with you guys that the Conservation Commission is um, sponsoring our second snowshoe tour. We did our first one back uh, towards the end of February out in 12 shares, and we're going to do a second one uh, this Saturday, March 14th, from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, we ask people to um, <coughs> meet at Town Hall around 12.45, and then we're going to try to carpool or take a bus over to Drake Side Road, and we're going to go out on the conservation easement out there. It's a 20-acre uh, parcel, um, so we are excited to uh, be getting out on some of our town-owned lands and sharing it with others. Um, so we just ask if people are interested to um, register through conservation. Um, my phone number is 603 uh, 5808 um, and this uh, information is also posted on the town website so I'd encourage people to to check it out and join us thank you thank you further public comment this evening seeing on uh, Roman three announcements and community calendar select no doubt uh, just that tomorrow's election day and it's uh, everybody's civic duty to get out there and vote and uh, know what they're voting about that's it thank you sir ma'am we we'll look forward to seeing a lot of voters at the polls tomorrow. We'll be over there in shifts. And uh, I, as one member of the board, wish our fellow selectmen uh, the best as they run in very tough races <laughs> to return to the board. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Welch. I guess, Mr. Chairman, the only comment I have to make is the reason there's no money in the budget for roads is because the Budget Committee cut it three years ago and we have not been able to get it restored and they cut the sidewalk appropriation to 6000 <coughs> this year. So, yes, we'd like to do that and we, and we agree with you that it should, it should be in. Thank you, sir. Roman four is the consent agenda. Um, myriad veterans requalifications, number one. Number two, park bench at Ruth C. Stimson Park, Mar Mark and Holly Lambert. Number three, banner sign license, Muddy Nose, 105 Toll Farm Road. And number four, pistol license, Brad Dennison. Motion, please. So moved. Bridal Bordell, with the second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman five, approval of minutes, one, 23 February 2015. Get the minutes, because I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Roman 5 will stand by. Roman 6 appointments. 1. Is Jay left? Jay's left the building. He's done his soak up the rain enough already. Number 2 is Brian McCabe, Channel 22. Alpha maintenance of equipment and purchases. Bravo air conditioning for fire department server room. And Charlie programming problems. Sir. How are you doing? Um, I guess we'll start right at number 1 if you got my, my letter I gave, I gave you guys. Uh, the first thing we need to do is renew the Pegspin subscription. That's the online buy feed and also 
for the programming that's what you see on TV is what you get on the pipe stream. And that is going to be a yearly expense, and right now it's at $1,780. Do you want me to continue with all of them? And then no, let's, let's just chop them at a time, please. Uh, questions on Alpha? Select them. Select them. Okay, a motion for that? So moved. I second it. Okay. Second. Favor? Unanimous, thank oh, you. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Second is uh, two of their bolts. That's a brand name DVD storage, storage cabinets. We only have two. Uh, these are for all the DVDs we're converting to. Um, or all the uh, VHS were converted to DVDs. We're almost done. We're down to the last 50 or 60. And um, right now we, we've got two full, and we've got the rest of them all scattered all over the, the studio. So we need to fill up. We need two more to uh, do that. Uh, they're $114.99 each, so it's $229.98 to uh, get yeah. those. Make a motion. Okay. That's bridal. That's Griffin. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank okay. you, sir. All right. Next is a DVD printer. We would like to uh, purchase uh, a DVD printer. Right now, when we sell a DVD to somebody, it's basically my handwriting or one of the other guys, which isn't, it's not very professional for what they're paying for. And, and Channel 13 has one, and it's very nice. And when they give me DVDs, when we were getting DVDs, it was very nice to have a simple printout. So it's... Uh, We've never had one. I don't know why, but we've never had one. And we, this one is a, it's a Prima Bravo. It's a, it's a basic printer. It does 20 at a time. Uh, it's actually like the smallest professional one I could find. Uh, it, it's a list price of $890. Like I said, it's just something for, you know, if somebody wants to buy a DVD for $10, $15, I don't think they want my scribble all over it. Thank you. Brian, how, how many DVDs do we go through a year? Well, we, we try not to push it. I, I try not to push it for that reason, you know. I mean, if we were to put on the website that these were available, I think we would sell more, especially of uh, the talent contest and stuff like that. But it's, you know, to hand somebody spend even ten dollars, which is a minimal amount, for something that's handwritten on you know, in the Sharpie on the uh, on the outside. I I just don't see it as professional. Not that we're that professional, but try to. So plus for anything else we you know, if we have to send it out to whoever, whoever needs one. So. I'll make a motion that we uh, purchase the printer. I'll second it. Bridal Waddell, all those in favor for $890. Unanimous. Thank you. Sir? Uh, next, now I'm leaving this up to you, the board. Um, we had a refurbished Nexus, the actual brain of the channel. Uh, but we gave that to Channel 13 to get them up and going. So now we don't have one. And I wanted to see if you want to have one on the shelf. Now it's, it's $7,900, and that's a lot of money to be sitting on the shelf. But... If we were to lose the channel, say something catastrophic ha happened to the Ultra Nexus, uh, and it had to be shipped out, or if they couldn't fix it online, or they couldn't come down and fix it, it would be really down probably a week, if not ten days. Yep. So, but that's that's it's never happened since I've been here. Okay, it's always been something they could fix on, they fix, and sometimes our our um, supplier has a, a buyer, I mean a lender unit. So, but you can't guarantee you're going to get that because they may have it out to somebody else. So, and they have one up at um, uh, Access AV now, and it's refurbished. And I, I, I went on the internet. I can I can find them, but they're not they're not refurbished. They're not working. So, I mean, it's it's not like something you can just go get anywhere. I couldn't I couldn't get a like any of the comparable bids or anything like that for them. It's either going to be your distributor or, you know, you're getting it on, on uh, eBay, and they're usually not working. So. Thank you. Select more Dell. What's your recommendation? I mean, if it was me, my business or something, I don't know if I would have a $8,000 piece of equipment on the shelf. I mean, I, but I want to leave it up to you. I want you to say, you know, we can do without. We can probably, I mean, is it going to go down? I mean, if we had a lightning strike or something, maybe, but... 
like I said, I've been here eight, nine years, and we've never lost it for any more than, I think, a day, you know, when we had a problem. Thank you. So. Second one, closing. If you should purchase that piece of equipment, how much money would be left, assuming that everything you have to discuss with us tonight got spent, how much money would be left in your account? In the account, right now the balance is uh, 58357 If uh, I everything you agreed to everything, it would be seventeen four sixty nine ninety nine. So approximately fifty one thousand. Mm. I mean, it's a lot, but I, I have to bring it up. I wanted to, because no, we, I, we I had it before that. and we don't anymore, so. I appreciate that. It, it is a conundrum because <coughs> if we should be down for a week, that would be a terrible disaster. I think that's worst case. For the community, right. It would, but I mean, we, you know, they're pretty good at access AV. It's, it's a matter of if you catch them on a Friday, if something would happen on a Friday, then you're... I'd, I'd like to hear what if, the or can I just jump back in? have to say. Mr. Yeah. 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 have your alibi, yes. Thank you. <laughs> if we were down, mm -hmm. can you tape the meetings and then yes. put it up late? Yes. So there would be a method, there would be a method, method to keep the meetings on. going. They would not be live and there would be no okay. telecast. Okay. Yes, the meetings could be okay. saved. Okay. We, lose them. we could do the meetings with a camera. I mean, right. there's always a way. Right. It doesn't sound to me like that we really need it, so I would be against I believe. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> Yeah, I would have no problem with that. I would hold off right now. Great. So there will be no motion on that. Number five, please, sir. Number five is the air conditioning uh, unit for the fire department server room. This is where the uh, Channel 22 and Channel 13 are housed, and also some other servers of the town and some of the uh, radio equipment for the, the fire department. And right now it's fine because it's winter, but once summer hits, the room should be shut off and locked so it's not accessible to anybody. Good. And uh, if we shut it off, uh, it, it will heat up in there like it does in, these, in the back room here. So we, it, we, you know, Paul recommended that we get a fire to, I mean, a, uh, an air conditioning unit for it, like he has in his server rooms, to keep it cool so we don't have any breakdowns of the equipment. Um, we tried it. Rusty had suggested, you know, maybe putting a thermostat in there, but I, I, to do that, you'd have to reconfigure all the, the um, duct work. Duct work, and then I, and it, I don't think it would it would be more costly to do something like that. You'd have to rip the walls and get into everything, and that would be a real, I think, inconvenience for the fire department. So this is, uh, we had three, we got three beds. Um, lighthouse heating and cooling being the cheapest at 64 six thousand four hundred and fifty dollars uh, again if we don't do this there's a little you know maybe it'll be fine but what uh, Paul says it will heat up in there and eventually it'll get it'll overheat because it, because the air conditioning outside will be on but it won't sense the heat in there so it won't it, of course it won't turn on and again we should have the door shut to secure the server room like the one downstairs has so so Whereas the last item was, maybe it might happen. I mean, yeah, this, this, this is important. If it does heat up, it will happen. It will happen. And, and this is, you know, something, I mean, nobody wants to spend that kind of money, but it's your right to lose, you know, possibly lose the channels. Have them overheat, shut down. And what, what kind of money would... To the equipment, how much the equipment that's in there? What, what, that's, there's, just our equipment is, what, they're 17,000 each, so it's yeah. 36 plus yeah. the, all the other equipment. Right. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? Also move that we uh, authorize. And, 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 and being specific, uh, just to... The air conditioning. The air conditioning. The, the they're they're worth three bids you secured. And, yes, and part of that motion is to go with which uh, which amount? The 6450? 6450. That's Lighthouse Heating and Fuel. Okay. Incorporate that in that motion. Second by the bell. It was in favor. Unanimous. Thank you, sir. And your last item, please. Last item is just the sound problems. I just want to update, uh, update you to what's going on with the, the sound. Um, it's still not good, and it's not our equipment, it's not everything we've put in. Everything we have is working great. It's what's going from the transmitter. It's from the transmitter and the receiver that Comcast gave us. We cannot get it synced. We've spent our last meeting, we and him over at the fire department, and we here trying to adjust it. We only give you gains, which basically pushes the signal, but you lose clarity when you do that. And we just couldn't find it. The best we have is what we have now, which doesn't sound great. 
over the uh, TV. And what we've been doing is we don't play that, we play our backups, which is a DVD or the PEG, which sound great, sound fine. So we know it's the transmitters, they just brought them back, so they were all set, and we just, we're not happy with them. So we, Paul and I are going to look into our own transmitter or, and receiver. Something in, in what he's seen isn't that expensive, not, not astronomical like they, these, I believe, are very expensive, but they're just not working out. So I just wanted to bring you up to date on that, that we are working on it, and we hope to get it done in the next month or so, have it come before you to purchase some equipment. And I don't, again, I don't think it'll be that bad as far as money. Wonderful. Any final questions for Brian? Uh, I mean, is there a reason why their stuff doesn't work, or don't yeah, know why their stuff doesn't well, work? They, they, you know, they say it's great stuff, but <laughs> it's just it, it failed out of the box, and now and that was horrible. And we were, we're running off uh, the aminos, which we run for the the, uh, the derivative session, and uh, those were working fine, but they would interfere with the town's website, everything in the town. So we had to stop doing that, and, and they brought these over. We thought they would be fine, but they're just not. They're just, everything sounds over-modulated, so. Thank you. Select more Wilson. Anything in the contract that requires them to provide that equipment? Well, it is. It, it is provided for... No, I mean working equipment. Working? Well, you know, I, I just haven't heard back from them. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping they'll, maybe they'll come out and say, oh, this is what's wrong. But there's no real adjustments on these. All the cables are right. They, they hooked it up. And like I said, the sound we're getting to it is fine. It's just what's going over the yeah, because it's not very nice airways. what's coming out. No, it's it's very frustrating, and you know, they just don't get right back. To the us. worst case scenario, you got to be able to hear what people are saying. How much did you say? Six thousand? No, this is the, that we don't know yet. But I'm believing. I, what I understand from Paul, you, you know, be a working thousand on or so. it. Yeah, we're working on it. Okay, because people have to be able to hear what the heck is going on. Right, right. I don't like the idea of them getting away with um, giving faulty equipment. You're right. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's faulty. I, I don't know. I'm not a, an expert at that. You know that. So, I, I, it's like you can't. You, they just show up and they fix. You know, we're wondering where they're at, where they're at. We call. You know, and then they just show up and they fix it. And we're like, oh, great, it's all set. But uh, it's just not working out like that. It's just the first guy they sent wasn't. <laughs> first did it wasn't we get the picture yeah and so we just I, we're just looking into it hopefully they'll call back and say this is the problem you just need to do this you need to and you'll be all set but we're just waiting and I just want to let you know that we are looking at alternative solutions Thank Thank you. keep after it you do a good job yeah all your crew does a good job <coughs> Brian thank you for your time thank, thank you. you appreciate it very much thanks sir. Brian thank you Roman 7, Town Manager's Report, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, well, my most important report uh, this week is that the town election is going to take place tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Winnicott High School. Please vote. This is your community, and you need to instruct us in what you want us to have done to make it better for all of you. The system requires your vote in order to accomplish these items. You see as needed for yourself and for your fellow townspeople. We've completed a major portion of snow removal within the community. Well, a few options are con operations are continuing, and there are a few options on how we do those. We are trying to minimize those expenses. Our contractors have been placed back on call. We'll be tabulating total costs for all departments to the uh, winter storms, and we'll be prepared to file for state and federal aid should, emphasis on the word should, the governor and president approve the emergency declarations. So far, that hasn't been done. Those requesting an exemption uh, from property taxes at the beach, there is a portion that can be exempted. I should contact the beach precinct. For those of you um, who are eligible for and do not receive exemptions for property taxes for veterans or for elderly, please contact the assessing office at that time of the year to, to do that. Before March. 31st or by March 31st? By March 31st, by March yes. March 31st. Um, the <coughs> City of Portsmouth uh, has requested the board's attention to Senate Bill number 253, 
which they have requesting the town support. Uh, that bill authorizes, and I quote, um, it would assess a one dollar fee for each night and for each unit in a hotel or um, that is rented. Uh, if there's no rental, there's no, there's no charge. The idea is that the, the money be paid directly on a semi-annual basis to the municipality and not to the state. That would amend the general statutes to accomplish that. Um, snow removal. As of this morning, total snow removal, and this is not complete. I have not received the fire and police department expenses. I still do not have fuel expenses, and I do not have repair expenses. Parts and materials and labor for that. As of this morning, the cost of snow removal and snow plowing was three hundred and eighty-one thousand two hundred and ten dollars and eighty-five cents. That's two hundred and twenty thousand six hundred and forty-five dollars over the current budget that's being asked for on the town the town budget. Um, we had a uh, um, uh, email today from the municipal association requesting support. <coughs> from the board members to um, our representatives to vote against House Bill Number 547, which would, again, place um, many of the telephone poles in town as tax-exempt. Uh, that had been going on for, as you know, decades. Uh, it was finally taken off, and uh, there was a lobby, a heavy lobby going on in Concord to restore it. So uh, if you would please call our representatives. That would be a significant loss in revenue to us. The equalization ratio for the town has been established by the state. <coughs> Excuse me. That ratio is 90.9 percent. So we dropped approximately 10, almost 10 percent, in the value of our properties within the community <coughs> versus the regular assessment of the tax billing. <coughs> we uh, we did sign. Uh, for the state, and it has been approved by the state, the SRF funding loan uh, for the Church Street pump station upgrades for 57, and, and we're receiving a payment this month for $57,035.69, which should be received uh, any day now. Uh, that's part of our SRF funding. And Mrs. Stiles had sent an email in today requesting board members to uh, support, at least consider, support for Senate Bill Number 230, which she has filed on behalf of uh, one of the towns she represents. And that would allow cities and towns with permission from the Commissioner of Transportation to set seasonal speed limits where there is excessive uh, pedestrian traffic and bicycle traffic on state highways. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ozell, questions for the town manager? Yeah, I just, uh, the, the Portsmouth, uh, what are we, we going to do on that? That's what I'm asking you. Uh, okay. They, they want to know if you would, you, would be, you would be willing to support yeah. and notify the legislators. Okay. I'm, I'm not in favor of that, just because the fact that I think we would have to run it by businesses in town and stuff in the 10 week sessions. Um, it only has one sponsor. And when you only have one sponsor, no. Bill doesn't have much chance to right. getting through it all. I mean, they had no other Democratic sponsors or Republican sponsors on it. So right. it, it does not look like a bill that, that I and mean, I'm not in favor of it at this time. I'd be in favor of talking with businesses prior to doing that. Yes, sir. Anything else for the town manager, Mr. Waddell? No, I'm typing. Thank you. Selectman Rosen. Yeah, Fred, would you just reiterate on the state and federal aid that it's not automatic for our snow emergency, and and that's contingent upon the governor of the state declaring emergencies for each separate incident? Because I've had people say, oh, well, you're going to get all your money back that you've spent on the snow removal from, from the feds. I would say we're, the, the chances are very good that we're going to get nothing back, absolutely nothing. The governor did not declare an emergency on storm number two or storm number three, only declared an emergency on storm number one, and the president did not follow suit, and FEMA did not follow suit. So the, the chances of us receiving any money is remote. 
so with people anticipating a great and besides if the money came in it would come in as an unreserved fund balance uh, it wouldn't go into the budget it would be revenue that's but true and it would only be 70 if it was it was federally approved it would be 75 percent of what the approval is right certain items are not accepted uh, for reimbursement right. uh, and the state would not fund they're twelve and a half percent because they need an appropriation, and it's not in the hopper for the bill, for the mm -hmm. budget. I just want to clarify that for the public before the vote tomorrow, because people have been saying to me that they uh, uh, are thinking that we're automatically going to get a great windfall from the federal government because of the uh, to help us out with the storm payments. In reality, that money is coming out of your operating budget, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Fred. Mr. Griffin? No, thank you. Thank you. Well, well said, thank you. Thank you. Roman 8, return to recess public hearings of 23 February for Lot B for continuation should need arise. Mr. Welch, a brief synopsis. The I satisfaction of our legal obligations to date and where we go from here. Thank Unnecessary you. to return to that, Mr. Chairman. Um, there are a number of different items that have to be done. We have to wait until the snow has gone off the ground to do several of them. So. This will not happen for some period of time. Thank you very much. Roman 9, New Business 1, Section 805-45, Speed Limits Established Amendments, Alpha 805-45, Alpha, Limit of 20 miles per hour, Add, quote, for school zones, end quote, in title and add, quote, Academy Avenue, end quote, and quote, High Street from Academy Avenue East to George Avenue, end quote, and Bravo 805-45, Alpha, Limit of 20 miles per hour, remove all listed streets except when it comes road, Charlie, and to place those streets removed from Section 805-45 Alpha under Section 805-45 Bravo, limit of 25 miles per hour without wording, quote, sign post that I mentioned, highway, end quote. Mr. Welch, that's enough. Can you translate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It does kind of sound like a dissertation in Greek, doesn't it? Um, we're reviewing the, uh, the ordinances, and we do this periodically. We had some questions with regards to the speed limits over uh, around uh, Ancient Highway and the side streets. Uh, they're all posted uh, in the ordinance for 20 miles an hour. That's an illegal speed limit except in school zones. So what we're requesting that you do is that you remove all those streets in that area down to the 25 mile an hour speed limit, which is the lowest that can be set by state law, mm -hmm. and then uh, establish uh, something more than just the speed limit that's on one kind of road for the high school, but the uh, speed limit for the academy uh, on High Street and Academy Avenue, so that that area will be posted for 20 miles an hour when, sc when school is in session. Thank you. Mr. Oh. Oh. Well, let's start with you. Go ahead, Mr. How about our here? With that's posted. That is posted. It's posted both ends. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Griffin. Oh, thank you. Great idea. Good idea. Okay. And does that need any uh, board action? It does need a formal vote, sir. And make the motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> Number two, acceptance of Marshland, 1.5 acre parcel on Elkin Street, tax map 273, lot 22, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a donation to the Conservation Commission. It is a piece of marshland, uh, a little on the wet side. Um, <laughs> and in keeping with the prior votes of the annual town meeting, uh, on a number of different occasions, uh, this land was offered to the Conservation Commission for perpetual care uh, and for ownership, and the Conservation Commission, by law, must have the selectmen accept that, uh, that donation according to the statute. Mm -hmm. I still move acceptance. Second. Rosie we'll Bridal, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. From intent or business one, two zero one five, joint operations plan, dread, sir. I believe, sir, that you asked to have this added to the agenda for any discussion that you might want to uh, take. Thank you. In light of our, our substantial support from the state in recent months and our legislative efforts, Mr. Waddell, any comments on the uh, dread JOP? Well, just I think it's something we, we need to get done. Mm -hmm. That uh, I, I think we have to be careful and make sure that we get it done. You know, that it satisfies our needs. That we aren't, that we, that if I don't want to see us get into a situation where we're just banging heads with the state. Mm -hmm. Even though we feel we're being slighted, I think that, that it's really necessary to work with them and try and work through this process 
rather than get into a power struggle with them and both sides go to their corners and just get nothing done. So uh, I'm in favor of going ahead with it. Thank you. Second Wilson. I agree that we need to communicate, and my one, one and only caveat is that the meeting be held in Hampton in public <coughs> on TV. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? I feel similar to what Mr. Waddell said, and that's my feeling. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. Ditto. Great. Uh, my comments are is this is a, uh, uh, a staff action for whoever's on the board um, next week, and there's an extreme danger you could be uh, here next week. Um, and so going forward again, we do, uh, we do contribute out of 03842 in excess of uh, $150 million to the coffers of the state. We do quite a bit for the state. It's a relationship we need to keep on redefining and uh, looking uh, for a little bit of a, a give back, more legislative response, uh, more legislators backing Hampton for that revenue grab. That's money that doesn't come back into Hampton. It goes to Concord. It mills around up there and benefits others. And finally, uh, the expenses that we provide, given this catastrophic storm this year, is really starting to impact people's budgets. We have infrastructure demands that Ms. Baker spoke of tonight. We need our money. We need more support than the, the days of doing business on state property. Unreimbursed, I think, for the smart business owner and astute political leader uh, needs constant re-examination. Thank you. No, Can I just say one other thing, yes, sir? I just want to make a clarification that <coughs> we need more legislative support, but not necessarily from our, our legislators are supporting us 100%, and I think I want the public mm -hmm. to know that, that Senator Stiles works her, like crazy up there. Uh, Lenny Cushion, Fred Rice, mm -hmm. you know, Tracy, um, Dave Wood, they're all up there fighting for Hampton all the time, and I want to make sure that we know that it's, we need support from other legislators mm -hmm. in other areas. And, thank you. And, and thank you for that. My final comment before I move on is uh, I was up in Concord twice last week. There were other uh, uh, former my OPIC and special business interests that did have uh, state agency direct testimonial mm -hmm. support. There were committee members that slept off of committee tables to support uh, efforts going forward. Again, on my OPIC, now interested uh, legislative efforts. An attorney came uh, to testify, was introduced by a committee member. That attorney that was testifying in support of legislation would be submitting an RFP to conduct business if that legislation was successful. Awesome. That effort uh, had state agency support from state agencies testifying in behalf of that. And uh, I'm not going to make any further comment on that type of conduct. However, I will say when uh, Senator Stiles does make initiatives and efforts and testifies, we simply get Commissioner Rose uh, doing a placeholder and then uh, offering written testimony, uh, not supporting our efforts mm -hmm. to uh, keep $1.2 million with next order. So there is a sharp distinction between uh, who's getting support up in uh, Concord, and it's certainly not Hampton. Uh, we're moving on to uh, 86 Woodland Road, Alpha discussion of ownership of hydrants, ownership of streetlights, and discussion of proposed bonding for road improvements. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is a current subdivision that's been approved by the Planning Board. Uh, the applicant for the subdivision has come before the Board of Selectmen and the Public Works Department has reviewed the proposal. And I'll go down through them uh, starting with item Alpha. Uh, discussion on hydrants. Uh, it's recommended that the town accept uh, the placement of hydrants and pay for those hydrants as part of the annual fee to Aquarian Water Company uh, to make sure there is a fire hydrant sitting on that road and is recommended by the planning board. Um, on B, which is discussion of street lights, um, we suggest that that uh, be held in abeyance. Uh, we'd like to see, uh, and we're not, we're not suggesting that it should be rejected at this point in time, but we'd like to see how the lights are installed, how, how the underground wiring is going to be installed to the lights and where it's coming from. Mm. We're suggesting to them that it should be placed in conduit so that we don't have a high expense trying to fix something when it breaks. We're also suggesting to them that since these issues are not decided yet, uh, that town and country fixtures similar to the ones that are on Church Street are, are uh, Island be placed. Those are, those are the type of fixtures that we have materials to maintain for. 
and, and there's no sense in us stocking for all these different types of fixtures. So we're suggesting that when the street uh, is ready for public acceptance as a, as a town road, that prior to that they bring in all this information so that it can be examined and we can make a, a good recommendation to the board on whether or not to accept the street lighting. Thank you. If I can go to Mr. Griffin first on the planning board, sir. Any comment? No. Um, I agree with Fred. Thank you, sir. Mr. Waddell. Selectman Wilson. I have some comments that I want to make in dealing with this project, and I'm going to apologize, but I'm going to take a few minutes. Um, I think that we need to focus on the end result of this development before we make any decisions. And the primary focus for this decision has to be whether this will or will not be a public or private road. The decisions that we make in other areas all rest on that designation, and that's going to be a critical designation in my mind. The issues are, number one, the proximity to the primary town wells. Number two, the proximity to private wells. There are private wells owned by adjacent property owners. There are unenforceable provisions that have been placed by the Conservation Commission, and there has been a lack of supervision on many developments in uh, my uh, understanding, and I think this will be another. There is a huge liability to this town or a homeowners association, whichever the case may be. If this is deemed a private road, the homeowners association will have to take responsibility for any contamination associated with runoff going down to the wells. The hydrant situation as well, and I did read Fred's memo, and with all due respect to the manager, if this is designated a private road, which I think it must be because of the liability factor, then the homeowners association in this development should pay for a hydrant themselves. They will need to pay the rental. Obviously, Aquarian owns the hydrants and would maintain them, but they would have to pay for the annual um, rental. I looked today at our expenditures in 2014, and the taxpayers of this town spent $491,822, that's $16,000 over budget, in the last calendar year for hydrant rental. Now, the town does benefit. We have unmetered water for fires. But nevertheless, I am not willing to add another hydrant rental to the taxpayers if we don't have to, and if this is a private street, we won't have to do it. I attended the hearings related to the 86 Woodland Road um, proposals to the planning board. Uh, the Aquarian representatives were in there, and I was present when they were there, as was Rick. Um, they discussed that test wells would likely have to be drilled and there would be, have to be ongoing monitoring. Uh, I assume paid by the ratepayers. Now, there is reference, and I just, just as I sat down, saw this uh, memo from uh, uh, Jason and, and so forth talking about the, uh, the legal, legal opinions here. Um, the configuration of the land where this development is proposed is a downslope from Woodland Road. If the property at 86 Woodland Road, the old house with the buried oil tank in front of it, was the only point at issue, there would not be a problem. But one of the conditions that the Conservation Commission uh, requested and asked to have put in the, the documents is uh, no salt on the road. Hello? We've just finished a terrible winter, and I can tell you that Little River Road is in the Aquifer Protection District, 
And we love salt all over the place. And whether or not the individuals who own the properties in this development would forego salt, which I certainly uh, don't believe, who's going to enforce it? Who enforces anything in these developments? Once the paperwork is signed off, it's a done deal. That, and that also doesn't reference fertilizers. You heard Jay sitting here earlier that we have a high uh, concentration of, of fertilizer contamination, especially in this part of the state. The aquarium mentioned that they would have to drill the test wells uh, if this development goes online. Uh, I will remind you that water runs downhill, and regardless of the stipulated 400-foot perimeter of the well, that's an arbitrary line, and I don't believe the water will recognize it. I don't believe water is going to flow down that street and say, whoops, here's the 400-foot line, and stop. That's not going to happen. The um, contaminated wells, contamin contaminated water, you all got the memo from Exeter, the contamination in the water supply over Warner Lane, and the properties on the west side of Hampton that have their sewer taken care of by Exeter, and apparently, and I haven't realized it, they also are furnished with water from the, the town of Exeter, and they got a notice of contaminated water. Um, <coughs> the last thing we need to see in this town is have our drinking wells contaminated. All of us, with the exception of Rusty, get our drinking water from the Aquarian water supply. And those wells are tremendous producing wells. I don't want to sit here and be responsible for allowing a development to potentially contaminate the town water supply Comic Moran mentioned how expensive it is to find a new well and drill a new well. But taking offline a top producing well in this community, the public water is inexcusable. And as I have mentioned to you before, and I know I, I kidded a little when Mike Pierce ran for selectman and he was at one of the uh, uh, get togethers and he said something about the, the primary job of a, of a selectman is to provide uh, public services. And I said to him afterward, I beg your pardon, but the primary job of a selectman is to prevent liability to this town. Um, there are private wells adjacent and if those wells become contaminated because of that development being allowed to take place they will either sue us if that's a public road or sue a homeowners association which is fine by me but that will take the liability away I can't rest easy as a member of this board if I know that my action will potentially, maybe not in my lifetime, maybe not in yours, but uh, that will potentially cause harm or irreparable harm to a very valuable water source in this community. Uh, the Aquifer Protection Zone, and I would like the Planning Board to take a little closer look at that, the aquifer protection zone in which I live has salt all over the place, and I haven't ever seen anyone come around to see who's putting fertilizer on or not. So some of this stuff is window dressing, and quite frankly, I think it's lying to the public to infer that that stuff will be done. Uh, neither the Conservation Commission, uh, especially in, in the older days, nor the Planning Board has performed routine inspections, either during construction or subsequent to it. When I sat on the um, Planning Board, which I did as your representative for a year, we had incidents come in along North Beach, along 1A, where the plans that they put together for development in the 90s uh, were implemented and then neighbors are coming in now saying that they're being overrun with water problems 
because the building took place and pe they put the parking lots in the buffer zone and in the marsh. And finally, these poor people and the poor residents had to come to the planning board and beg for help to have somebody go out and check and see where those parking lots are all over overloading. I think, when, remember Cassie Lane, and Fred remember Cassie Lane, the, the drain pipe that the developer was going to take care of? And that's the sensitive water area over by Exeter, of the Exeter line. And then he said, well, the association would take care of it once he left, and the developers do leave. They don't live here. And then the association, I guess, said, fully the town will clean it. We can't be faced with a situation like that. I refuse to vote for anything on this plan until and unless we clarify whether we are willing to accept this as a public road or force the developer to do a private road, which will mean no waste collection, no snow plowing, and uh, they'll have to pay for their own hydrant, and they can do whatever they do because a private road will be a private road. But I think this is a terrible, terrible risk, a terrible liability to the town of Hampton to have that development go in, and I want no part of it being a public road. Thank you, Selectman Wolsey. Uh, Roman 10, any final old business, Selectman Waddell? Wait a minute. we got one more thing. What? Oh, the Bonnie Road, I forgot you. Okay, all right. Well, Back to Woodland. And let me, let me just kind of reel it in here um, on the agenda here. We're not here to approve the project. We're not yeah. here to... Uh, oh, well, I want to say a couple of things. Uh, all right, let me, let me just... Let me just uh, so, and I know you're the planning board rep, but thank you, Mary Louise, for your interest. There were three items on this, hydrant, street lights, and bonding for road improvements. We were going to address those further. There were no decisions to be made tonight. Mr. Griffin, you have the floor. Uh, First of all, if Aquarian Water has an issue with the wells, they need to come in and talk. And they, we don't really need Mary Louise to be, do all the talking for them if this is such a dire situation. Um, if the residents of that road are paying taxes, I think they need a hydrant. Um, they can pay for it. Fire hydrants. And, you know, I just, uh, she's raised so many issues here. Uh, we, the Hampton doesn't have enough money in the budget to be going around enforcing every single little thing. And I'm against uh, this enforcement of issues when the people that live right next door might not even have be held accountable. There's so many things that are being enforced and put in, and it, it may be all fine and good, but the residents that live right beside them may not be responsible and even have to answer to the same enforcement. And I just think it's unfair in many ways, and I think this is an issue that should be left to the planning board. It's not an enforcement board. The planning board is not. The uh, uh, conservation board is not an enforcement board, and it's only a, you know, uh, it's an advisory board. And I hear of so many things where of what's happening. I'm, I'm just against making all these rules that you can't enforce. And I don't think that Hampton, is, it's just the same way we, we work with the trash. Everyone wanted trash police. Hampton doesn't want that. The residents of Hampton don't want this type of renegade enforcement and uh, fines and this and that. It just isn't going to happen in Hampton as far as I'm concerned. And when the residents are paying tax, are they going to pay less on that private road? They're not. Good. And they, yeah, I'll be very surprised if this ends up a private road because I haven't seen that happen anywhere else. And I just think we're in dangerous territory here. Mr. Chairman? Uh, no, no, we're going to stand by. You spoke for almost 10 minutes, and this is not a collaborative thing. This is each member speaks. Now we're going to go to Mr. Biden. And I just say we're not going to vote on anything tonight. Thank you. One question. <laughs> One question. When they do put a caveat in there that they can't use sand, uh, salt on the road, can we sign, put a sign there that, that no salt will be used on the road? So as a town, so that with that, because I know that some of the towns do that when they do salt-restricted areas. They do have salt-restricted areas. They do have signage um, 
If it were a public highway, we could do that. If it's a private road, we could not do that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. I'm fine. Thank you. And <laughs> right back to you, Mr. Yes, ma'am. Okay. First of all, the planning board must have a lot of time on its hands if it can put in all these stipulations that are unenforceable. Don't lie to the public. Okay, and, right. and just, I just want to and stop. I, I, I must, and this, this is my last night as chair. Um, and, uh, but but I, I don't want to be talking about um, lies. And, and, uh, and this, But, but I, I, mean, I, just, I just want to hold the floor. You spoke for 10 minutes. I just want to say I know. Uh, we're not going to make any motions tonight. We're not going to change the destiny of this project. We've heard. We know how you stand. But we know how Rick stands. I just want to come back, and we're not going to be talking about lying to the public. The floor is yours. Well, I'll be respect. The, floor the yours. town planner... And I will say the former town planner, because we haven't enough experience with a new one yet, didn't go out and inspect a lot of these properties. There was a whole slew of properties that never got inspected, and they should have been inspected while things were going on and after the completion. And I'm re referring specifically to those lots on 1A and North Beach. Um, I, I will say that if the planning board has all these um, uh, rights and it's an independent board, it should be supervising its planner over which they have specific jurisdiction. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. I would like to make this, okay. uh, you know, Mr. Welch, is the planning board an enforcement board? No, sir, they're not. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's, 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 it's this board here that has the enforcement board. Inspections of properties? No, not even that. Okay. They don't? Now that, the planner? Now that no. we've now that we're queried, Mr. Welch, if I could grab the floor, please, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. We're enjoying ourselves. Yeah, I, I know. We're, we're, we're perhaps enjoying ourselves a little too much. Um, is there any final wrap-up, Mr. Welch, on the 86 Woodland Road? Yes, sir, there is. Okay, uh, please. I was invited into a meeting today with the uh, <clears throat> town council, uh, the town planner, the deputy director of public works, uh, discussing the bonding for the road improvements, uh, the public road improvements, so-called, for this particular subdivision. Something that I was not aware of, and I don't think many other people were aware of, is that the approval requires test wells, monitoring wells, to be installed within the layout of the public road, the pro projected public road. That's a problem because it doesn't specify who owns them, it doesn't specify who maintains them, it doesn't specify who tests them. It doesn't specify what the test res tests need to be for, and it doesn't specify what happens if contamination is found in those wells and who's responsible for it. Mm. So we have um, sort of regrouped and asked the pregnant questions on, on all those areas uh, and have uh, requested that we receive answers to those because it's going to have a great bearing on what the public bond is on that particular road. Should this become a public road and those wells are on town property once the road is accepted, are we responsible for that? And if we find contamination in the wells, are we responsible to clean up the groundwater? I believe that the, um, they, the, t the water company is responsible for monitoring the wells. That's not what I was told today. I well, maybe monitoring the wells. Yeah, monitoring the wells. But not that's responsible for what they find. Right. And that's, that's the issue, because we would have to have test requirements. I, I also re asked if these wells are going to be registered with the Department of Environmental Services since they go to groundwater, and that's the current federal law. So we're getting into a, an area we don't know anything about here. We want to find out about it so that we can set a reasonable bond and move forward with the subdivision if that's what needs to happen. So we're suggesting that that not move forward at this point. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Moving on, Roman 10, any final old business? Mr. Waddell? No. Ms. Wilson? No. Mr. Griffin? Mr. Bright. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, before the Board adjourns, I ask that there be a motion to go into non-public session under RSA 91A, colon 3, Roman 2, small e, consideration or negotiation of pending claims or litigation, a motion which would require a roll call vote. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank I'll you, second. Sir. Second. And the roll call looks like we are all in favor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. We need to you decide about the uh, who's uh, the timing at the polls. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. The closing comments. Thank you. Do you want closing comments before we go into the...
Yeah, sure. Do you want to take closing comments, Mr. Waddell? Vote tomorrow. Vote tomorrow. Do you want to just, I can do 8.30 to 12.30 or 1 and then 5 to 8. Whatever you three non-combatants would like to do, you? Um, that's fine. I'll be there first. So more signatures. Okay. I can only be there at the end. You said do what? You can be there at one. I'll be there first thing, so it opens. Yeah. You said you get there at eight thirty. Eight thirty. Yeah. I All can right. do eight thirty to one. All right. Then I'll I'll do I'll do first thing in the morning and after one until Rick gets there. Well, I'll be back. I can get back at five, uh, Rusty. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks. And I think I can get there. Good night, Max. Good night, Green. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other final comments? Closing comments? Okay. Good night, Hope. Thank you very much. Okay.